This lesson deals with delta to y and y to delta transformations. You can find these notes in the ECE 201 ebook in chapter 2, starting on page 36. Consider the following interconnection of parts. We're going to call this a bridge later on in the course. Here I've got five resistances interconnected. What's interesting about this structure is that no two resistances are in series or in parallel. In other words, to be in series, you have to share the same current. So this is not in series with this because I've got this element hooked up here. This is not in parallel with this because there's an element in between. I have to share the same two nodes. What I want to take a look at is a way to transform this circuit so that it does have series and parallel combinations. And we're going to do that by taking two of their substructures apart and replacing them. The top here looks like the Greek symbol delta, and so does the bottom flipped upside down. We call that a delta substructure. This term over here with R1, R3, and R5 looks like an umbrella. If you were to open it, you could form a letter Y with it. Same is true over here. So we redraw these down here as the Y structures. Suppose that we have a circuit that has Ys and deltas in it. I can transform a delta to a Y and a Y to a delta. And that's really our next theorem. I'm going to give you the formulas for doing the transformation. Then we're going to talk about deriving them and then show how to use this. Suppose that you start with a delta, and you're going to replace it by a Y. This has three nodes. We'll have the same three outer nodes, but there'll be an extra node from the Y. So I take the values of the resistors that are here and calculate the resistance here and here and here with these formulas. Likewise, I could start with the Y and create the delta by using the values in the Y to create the values for the resistances here. Now, if you look at the formulas, you notice there's some interesting patterns. The numerators are the same for this transformation from the Y to the delta, and the denominators here are the same when going from the delta to the Y. Memorizing these formulas could be very difficult, so let me show you a shortcut way to remember this stuff. I find it handy to be able to remember these formulas. It's going to allow us to create series and parallel combinations from really any structure of circuit. This is the one thing that would stand in the way of doing that. Let's take the delta and label its nodes A, B, and C, and you can arbitrarily pick any node and call it A, and then pick the other node here or here as B, and then the last one will be C. Then draw the Y inside of it, and it too now is going to have A, B, and C as its node. Now in a problem, you probably don't have this labeling. You just have values there. So take that structure on the side and do this little bit of a transformation. I'm going to draw one inside the other. I'm going to label the resistor R sub A to be across from node A. Node B, R sub B, across from node C, R sub C. The resistor R1 hooks up to the first letter of the alphabet. The resistor R2, the second letter of the alphabet and then R3 to the third letter of the alphabet. So that's a way to label the delta and the Y in an existing problem where you might have some other symbols. In fact, you want to have other symbols so you don't mix these things up. Okay, now can I remember the formula to convert from, say, a Y to a delta? Look up here, product of the resistance is taken two at a time. So R1 times R2, 2 times 3, and 1 times 3. No squaring, just taken two at a time, but all the combinations that you can come up with. The denominator is divided by R1, R2, and R3 for A, B, and C. But take a look at the circuit here. Look at where R1 is hooked up to. It is node A. So when I solve for R sub A, I'm going to divide by the thing that hooks up to node A from the Y to put into the delta formula. Same is true for R2 is hooked up to B, and R3 is hooked up to C. You get the formula just by doing this little bit of a memory trick. Let's go the other way. Let's take the delta and create a Y. So we've got R1, R2, and R3. The formula above here, the denominator is the summation of the three resistances in the delta. The numerator has got, for R3 here, RA times RB. But if you look at where 3 is hooked up, here's R sub A and here's R sub B. So when I'm solving for R3, just look back at this interconnection of one laid on top of the other. That's what has to go in the numerator. R2 be R sub A and R sub C. For R1, it would be RB and R sub C. You just scroll up here, you can see that's, that's exactly what the formulas are up here. Now, why would this be true? Let's take and let's make these two equivalent. Let's find the resistance looking between these two terminals and set it equal to the resistance looking between these two terminals. Nothing hooked up here, I just have R1 and R2 in series. In other words, if I put a voltage source here, the current would be the same. So that's the resistance looking into these two terminals. Now over here, 
I've got R sub C, and then with nothing hooked up here, if I put a voltage source here, I just have these two in series, and that would be in parallel with this. The next page, I'm gonna take those two and set them equal to each other. The resistance looking in terminals A and B for the two structures of the Y and the delta. Let's do this at nodes B and C and C and A. We have three unknowns, and I really do need three equations to solve that. Let's do the easier for the two first. Let's find the resistances R1, R2, and R3. If you look at these three equations here, I've got R1 and R2, and then I've got R2 and R3. So if I were to take and subtract this equation from this one, lose the R2. But I pick up an extra negative R3. So if I take that result and add it to this, cancel the R3 with the previous negative R3. What I'm left with is twice R1. That would be the sum of the first and last and subtracting the second. Now let's, let's take the resistances that we made equivalent and let's add those up and subtract them accordingly. So here's the numerator of RCRA and RCRB. The second numerator we're going to subtract and the third numerator we're going to add. We get a lot of term cancellation. This term cancels with this term. This term cancels with this term. And we're left with R sub B and R sub C twice. So the twos drop out and I get the formula we had on the previous page. Basically the same procedure for finding R2 and an R3. So if you look at the algebra for that, but again, very similar. It's hard to solve for is RA, RB, and RC. We don't really have a linear combination of equations. The last part of the proof, we were adding up terms. Let's take a look at maybe multiplying terms. If solve for R1 and R2 and R3, let's multiply those and see what we get. If I multiply R1 and R2, I wind up getting R sub C twice. So I get that squared. And then I've got an A and a B term here. If I multiply 2 times 3, I get an R sub A squared, and then the B and C. And likewise for R1 and R3. So if I were to add these together, get the denominator I had before here, but then the combinations of these three terms. I want to solve for R sub A, I need to pull out a term with R sub A in it. So if I pull out a, an R B and an R C out of this term, I'm left with R sub A times R sub A. If I pull a C and a B out of this term, I'm left with R sub A times R sub C. If I pull out a R sub B and R sub C out of this term, I'm left with A and B. This is the definition we just did for R1, and then I get this canceling with this. So R sub A then would be equal to this summation of terms divided by R1. Basically the same technique is used to find R sub B and R sub C. By pulling out term in this combination here that has the double combination of the subscripts. So in this case here, I left the term with the double R sub B's in here and pulled out R sub A and R sub C. We got a very similar procedure to solve for R sub B and lastly for R sub C. Proof really isn't all that critical. It's just a, a lot of algebra, but the formulas are very handy for making any problem into series and parallel combinations. Let's do an example to show how this works. Let's take this, what's called a bridge structure. Let's find the resistance looking into the terminals. Got some values of resistances here. Let's find the equivalent resistance looking in. Again, there's nothing's in series, nothing's in parallel. But if I were to take this bottom delta and replace it with a y, I get some really interesting results. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to label one node A, B, and C, and then I'm going to correspondingly call R sub A across from node A, R sub B across from node B, and R sub C across from node C. I replace that with a y between A, B, and C. I create an extra node here, which you can see now I've got a series combination and a series combination, and then I'll have a parallel combination and a series combination. The values that go here, I'm going to use the formulas on the previous page, but again, R1 is connected to A, R2 to B, and R3 to C. The values here, but the algebra is on the next page. So again, R1 is the summation of the delta resistances, and then what's hooking up to R1? Let's 50 and 50, RB and RC. So that's where I get that term from. And my result is 15.625. For R2, same denominator, which turned out to be 160. And the numerator, here's R2. And then here in the delta, it's the 50 and the 60, or R sub A and R sub C. And then lastly, 
our 3 over here, I've got the 50 and the 60 as the two terms in the numerator. These are the resistances that I wind up with. Now, putting these two in series, I get 115.625 and 118.75. I just punched in my calculator the product over the sum, and I get 58.58, and this is just indicating that 3 keeps repeating itself. Now, did I do the algebra correctly? Well, if these were equal to each other of 120 ohms, then I would expect to get 60. So this seems reasonable. It could again be wrong, but we can have some kind of a, of a check that can quickly look at something and decide whether it's correct or not. Now in parallel, I'll become a series resistance with the 18.75, and I get 77.33 ohms. Let's do the same problem again. Let's change y to a delta. I'm going to take this y and replace it with a delta. Again, you can pick any node and call it A, B, and C. This will be the extra node that's created. My delta is going to go between A, C, and B. So here's my A, C, and B. I kind of extended it a little bit so you can see the delta here. I'm going to label the resistor R1 connecting to A, R2 to B, and R3 to C. The delta, the resistance R sub B, is across from node B, R C is across from R sub C, and R sub A is across from node A. And again, I've calculated the resistor values using our formulas, where we take the products in the Y two at a time, so 1 times 2, 2 times 3, 1 times 3. R sub A is divided by R1, R sub B by R2, and R sub C by R3. Get 140, 233.33, and for that, 280 for R sub C. Okay, let me let's scroll back up here real quickly. So these two in parallel, I took the product over the sum of my calculator, and it's going to be smaller than 100. These two in parallel will be smaller than 50. Let's just get those values. I got 70 and 36.842. Now I put these two in series and I get 106.842. And then that's in parallel with 280, product over the sum, and I get 77.333. The result is last time. No matter which y or delta you pick of the two deltas and the two y's that are there, you get the same final answer. And again, this is an equivalent circuit. This is giving me the same resistance as the original circuit, but this is not the same circuit. It's physically different but it creates the same effect. These are what are called Y to Delta transformations.